All right, so this is the first lecture about the leg region. Now, in everyday life, when people refer to the leg, they were really referring to the entire lower extremity. However, in anatomy, similar to where the arm was a specific region of the upper extremity, the leg is a specific region of the lower extremity, and it's the region between the knee joint and the ankle joint. That is defined as the leg. And so in this lecture, we're going to talk about the osteology and the muscles in the leg region. All right, so this is an anterior view of the left leg. So here we show you the tibia and the fibula, and we're going to go through each of these individually. Notice that the tibia is medial to the fibula, so the fibula is on the outer, outer portion or lateral portion of the leg. The tibia is the weight-bearing bone. The fibula is not a weight-bearing bone at all. And then proximally for the tibia, it has the lateral and the medial condyles, which articulate with the medial and lateral condyles of the femur, respectively, to form the knee joint. It also serves as a distal attachment site for many muscles that originate in the thigh and the knee region. So muscles that are coming down from the thigh region, they'll come down and attach, you know, in different areas on the tibia. And it also serves as an attachment site for many of the muscles that are in the leg you know, that go on down to act at the ankle joint and in the foot. So I also want to zoom in here and show you this uh, structure right here. This is called the tibial tubercle. It's a ridge that projects anteriorly from the proximal tibia. And that's the location where the patellar ligament or patellar tendon will be attaching from the patella down here. And then the quadriceps tendon, which comes from the quadriceps muscles in your thigh, they come down and attach on this patella here. Then the patellar ligament or patellar tendon goes down and extends down to that tibial tubercle. So this is a zoomed in view of the ankle. So here you have the, the tibia, the fibula, tibia articulating with the talus, form the ankle joint, and then a bony prominence here known as the medial malleolus, which projects medially from the tibia. It's this nice bony prominence. You can actually palpate it on yourself. And that along with the distal part of the tibia, the shaft of the tibia articulates with the talus to form the ankle joint. The other notable thing about the medial malleolus is that it has a groove in the posterior and inferior aspect of it that serves to allow it to transmit tendons, arteries, nerves from the leg region to the foot region. So the lateral bone of the leg is the fibula, as you can see here. It does not bear any weight. The, the primary function of it is to serve as an attachment site for muscles in the leg region. So there's muscles attaching all along this, this bone right here. So this is an anterior lateral view of the left knee. And here we just want to show you the fibular head, which is shown right here. So it's the you know proximal end of the fibula bone. And this is the site where the common perineal nerve, actually when it comes off the bifurcation of the sciatic nerve, the common perineal nerve wraps around the fibular head like this. And then thus, by wrapping around like that, it exposes it to injury from a lateral blow like this. So a lateral blow from this region can damage the common perineal nerve. And then this is, you know, just distal to this is where it's going to bifurcate into the superficial perineal nerve and the deep perineal nerve. So again, we're zoomed in here at the ankle joint, tibia, medial malleolus from the tibia, talus, and then you have the fibula here, which has this lateral projection called the lateral malleolus, and this is what you can feel on the outer part of your ankle. And the thing to note about the lateral malleolus is that, like the medial malleolus, it actually articulates with the talus as well to help form part of the ankle joint as well. So you got to keep that straight. The malleoli are, are not from the same bone. The medial Malleolus is from the medial bone, the tibia. The lateral malleolus is from the lateral bone, the fibula. So just like in the form, there's an inner osseous membrane in the leg here that connects the tibia to the fibula. And again, it's a thick connective tissue sheet that extends all the way down between the two. It separates the leg into the anterior and posterior compartments. So superiorly, there's a large oval aperture. So the membrane begins about right here, and then there's an opening right here. And that's where the anterior tibial artery, when it comes off the bifurcation of the popliteal artery in the posterior aspect of the leg, it comes from the posterior aspect to travel into the anterior compartment. And that's how it gets there, is it travels through this superior oval aperture here. Same thing inferiorly, the, you know, the membrane ends about here, and there's a large opening in the inferior aspect for passageway of the perineal artery. So again, this is an anterior lateral view of the left knee, and here you can see that proximal tibiofibular joint right here. It's a plain type synovial joint formed by the head of the fibula, which you can see here, articulating with the tibia right here, and it allows very little gliding movement. So back zoomed in distally here, just to show you, this is the distal tibiofibular joint, which is shown right here between the tibia and the fibula, and this is a fibrous joint between the two bones. All right, so now we're going to talk about the muscles in the leg region. So just like all the other parts of the extremities, the leg is no different. It's composed of muscular compartments. Each compartment has a general action, general innervation, so to help you keep it straight. 
So first we'll talk about here, there's the anterior compartment, which is located in this region right here. And the inner osseous membrane between the tibia and the fibula here is a big divider between the anterior and the posterior. So the anterior and posterior are here. And so it really comes in here. Then you have a lateral compartment, which is where the perineus, longus, and brevis are, which is a very small compartment, only two muscles in there. And then the rest, you have the anterior here, lateral here, and then you have the posterior. The posterior compartment is the big compartment. So first, the anterior compartment, it's innervated by the deep perineal nerve. So one thing I should mention here is, you know, so you're at the knee joint here, right? And the sciatic nerve comes down and it splits into the common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve. Okay, and the tibial nerve goes on and does its thing, and we'll talk about that. And the common perineal, it branches into the superficial perineal nerve and then into the deep perineal nerve. Okay, so two nerves. Superficial perineal nerve goes into the lateral compartment and does these two muscles and then a lot of sensory innervation along the skin here on the lateral aspect. And then the deep perineal nerve travels into the anterior compartment deep almost on top of the interosseous membrane and innervates uh, many of the muscles in the anterior compartment. And we'll go over this anatomy in more detail in the blood vessels and nerves section. So the anterior compartment, it functions to dorsiflex the ankle and extend the toes. That's what most of the muscles do. So first off, we'll start out here with the main, we're just going to kind of go down the line here. So we'll start out with the tibialis anterior, which is this broad muscle here in the anterior portion. Its origin is the proximal shaft and lateral condyle of the tibia, so up in this region here. So this would be your lateral, this is your medial, this is an anterior view. The insertion is the medial uh, cuneiform and the first metatarsal, so these are bones down in the feet, and you can see that here, you can follow the tendon down like this, and then it, it curves here and it wraps down onto the undersurface of the foot and attaches to these, to these bones, and that helps it uh, carry out its function, which its main, it's the, it's the main ankle dorsiflexor. So, you know, again, muscles contract, contract, they shorten, it's going to pull up on this. So it's going to pull the foot up. It also does some foot inversion, which is, again, muscles contract, they contract like this. That's pulling the, the foot towards this way. It's, all, it's making the sole of the foot or the plantar surface of the foot point medially. And then the innervation, it's an anterior compartment, so deep perineal nerve. Then you have the extensor hallucis longus, which is this uh, muscle shown right here. So this would be deep to tibialis anterior. Its origin is the anterior surface of the fibula. So again, we're out here laterally. This is medial. And the way you can know that is here's your big toe here. Your big toe is on the you know, most medial aspect of your foot. So you know your fibula is lateral. Your tibia is medial. So it comes from the anterior surface of the fibula. And it's diving back here, kind of in this region here, deep these other two muscles and the interosseous membrane. It inserts under the dorsal surface of the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe. So halysis means big toe in the lower extremity. So let's follow the tendon. Here's the muscle. Then we follow the tendon down this way. And oh, look, it comes all the way out here to the base of the dorsal surface of this distal phalanx of the big toe. So by doing that, you know, muscles contract, they contract it's going to pull that big toe up. So that's big toe extension. It also crosses the ankle joint, which is about right here. So it also is going to help with dorsiflexion. It's not the main ankle dorsiflexor, but it helps with dorsiflexion. And it's an anterior compartment muscle, so it's deep perineal nerve. So extensor digitorum longus. So here's tibialis anterior. Deep to that was extensor hallucis longus. So kind of lateral to both, lateral and deep to tibialis anterior, and then just lateral to that extensor hallucis longus is this extensor digitorum longus. This is just like the extensor digitorum in the upper extremity. It originates from the lateral condyle of the tibia and the anterior shaft of the fibula and the interosseous membrane. So it has this kind of broad origin up here between both bones, and then it goes across the interosseous membrane. So it comes down here, we'll follow the tendon. Here comes the tendon out like this, and it sprays out like this, and it attaches to the dorsal surface of the middle and distal phalanges of toes two through five. So you have phalanges in your toes as well. And you can see that here where they're spanning out and attaching to each toe, except for the big toe. So, you know, again, muscles contract. They contract. They're going to pull up this way, so they extend the toe. So if you extend your toes, this is the muscle that's doing it. It also crosses the ankle joint, so it does help a little bit with ankle dorsiflexion. And it's an anterior compartment muscle, so it's deep perineal nerve. Perineus tertius. This is a lower yield muscle, but just for completeness sake, we'll talk about it. As you can see, it's, it's this little guy right in here. And 
it, it originates from the anterior aspect of the distal fibula. So, you know, the proximal fibula would be up here. The distal fibula is down here. So it originates from about right here in the interosseous membrane. It it's inserts onto the dorsal surface of the base of the fifth metatarsal. So here's the here it is right here. And you follow the tendon kind of out like this. And this would be the base of the fifth metatarsal right here. Movement, so it crosses the ankle joint, so muscle contract, if it contract, it helps with ankle dorsiflexion. And then since it's on the lateral aspect out here, it's going to help with foot eversion. So inversion is pointing the, the sole of the foot medially like this. Eversion is where you point the sole of the foot laterally, so you pull the, from this side up. Innervation is deep perineal nerve. All right, so now the lateral compartment. So again here, here's your your interosseous membrane right here. We'll delineate this right here. So here's your lateral compartment right here. It's your anterior compartment, posterior compartment, tibia, fibula. So the lateral compartment is innervated by the superficial perineal nerve. So again, sciatic nerve comes down like this, breaks off into the tibial nerve. This is about at the knee region. Then goes into the common perineal nerve, which then goes into superficial perineal nerve and deep perineal nerve. Deep perineal, perineal nerve goes into the anterior compartment right here, travels right about in here. Superficial perineal nerve goes into the lateral compartment and does these two muscles in here, the perineus longus, perineus brevis. And it also does a lot of sensory innervation on the lateral aspect. So the function of the lateral compartment is to evert the foot and assist with ankle plantar flexion. So you'll see where these muscles on the lateral aspect, they pull up on the lateral aspect, so that would help with eversion, remember, which is where you point the foot out laterally. So here's an anterior view. Here's a posterior view. So we have perineus longus and perineus brevis. Also, depending on the book you look at, it may be called uh, fibularis longus, fibularis brevis, same thing as many things in anatomy. They have multiple names. So the origin is the lateral surface of the fibular shaft, and that makes sense. It's on the lateral aspect. It's right now coming down the surface of the fibula. So you can see it right here. We've indicated in the arrow. It comes down like this. Here's the posterior view. Here it is right here, perineus longus. Wraps around this way. And then it comes down and inserts on the foot on the under surface. So the tendon, kind of kind of like this tibia, tibialis anterior, where it wraps around the under surface of the foot. Same thing here. These muscles are going to wrap along the undersurface of the foot so that when they pull out this way they're kind of they're going to pull the foot up this way they're trying to pull the foot this way so that the sole or the plantar surface can point out this way in the lateral direction okay that would be eversion so muscles come down same thing here it comes down muscles contract they contract they're going to pull it out this way so that it uh, faces out laterally and this would be lateral on this side medial on this side so it attaches the first metatarsal, medial cuneiform. Also helps with ankle plantar flexion because it does cross the ankle joint. And it's a lateral compartment muscle, so it's superficial perineal nerve. Perineus brevis, so again, this is anterior, this is posterior. So here's perineus longus, so there PL, PL is here. Here's perineal, perineus brevis, okay, perineus brevis on the anterior side. Okay, and so lateral surface of the inferior two-thirds of the fibula. So it's a very similar origin. It's just a little bit farther down, inferior two-thirds. So this would be kind of the first third, second third, and then here's the last third. So really in this kind of this region right here. So it's a long, broad origin in this region right here. It inserts onto the first metatarsal. So it comes down just like longus, comes down this way and wraps around this way. You can see it coming. You can actually see a real good picture of it here where it dives down into this region and then goes under the under surface of the foot so that it can help pull up this way. So muscles contract, they contract, they're going to pull up this way, help the sole of the foot point out laterally like this. So eversion, just like perineus longus. And it also helps with ankle plantar flexion because it crosses the ankle joint as well. Innervation, it's a lateral compartment muscle, so superficial perineal nerve. All right, so the last compartment, the posterior compartment, this is the largest compartment in the leg. So again, we'll review here. So this is your anteriorly, posterior side, medial side, and then lateral side of the leg, the tibia, fibula right here, and this little, and this little bone right here. Interosseous membrane traveling here, separating your anterior compartment like this. So here's your anterior compartment, lateral compartment here, and then this big, huge thing is your posterior compartment. Now the posterior compartment, you can think of it as kind of similar to the forearm where there's a lot of layers and muscles. First, it's innervated by the tibial nerve. So again, you have that sciatic nerve coming down like this. Gives your common perineal nerve like this. 
the perineal nerve, which goes to the anterior compartment, superficial perineal nerve, which goes to the lateral compartment, and then you got the tibial nerve, which then goes to the posterior compartment. So it's pretty easy to keep these innervations straight for these muscles because each compartment has its own inter its own nerve. So you just got to remember what compartment's in, what compartment corresponds to which nerve, and then you got it. So it's divided into superficial and deep groups of muscles. So the superficial la layer has three, three muscles in it. Deep layer has four muscles. So the superficial layer of muscles, these three muscles, they function to plantar flex the foot. And then the deep muscles, they function to flex the toes, invert the foot, and assist with plantar flexion. So first, the gastrocnemius. So this is not a great diagram for the gastrocnemius because it's cut away here to show you the soleus, which is the next muscle we'll talk about. So we'll draw in the gastroc right here. So here's the gastroc. These are the two heads. It shows that very nicely. The popliteal artery is actually running through here. Remember we talked about that in the knee lecture. So the popliteal artery runs between the two heads of the gastrocnemius. So these two heads, they converge together like this. And we'll draw the fibers in like this. So this is the most superficial muscle. So this is the first of those three muscles in the superficial layer. And they all come down and they converge onto this tendon here, which is shared with the soleus, which we'll talk about. So the origin, it's posterior surface of the lateral and the medial femoral condyles. So there's a medial head and a lateral head corresponding to the medial and lateral condyle. Insertion, posterior calcaneus via the Achilles tendon. So here's the Achilles tendon right here. And the Achilles tendon is the common insertion of the soleus, which is deep to the uh, gastrocnemius, and then the gastrocnemius, and then they both insert onto the calcaneus bone, which is a large bone in your foot that essentially forms your heel. Now the movement is ankle plantar flexion. So again, muscles contract, they contract, it's going to pull this way, so it's going to cause the sole of the foot to, to face posteriorly. This is, you know, plantar flexion is when you, you go to, you know, you get out of bed and you put your feet down and you step off. It's, that's what gives you this step off uh, movement is plantar flexion. And since it crosses the knee joint, actually, it can also help a little bit with knee flexion as well. You know, muscles contract, muscles contract, help pull the knee this way. Insertion, it's a posterior compartment muscle, so it's a tibial nerve in innervation. The soleus, so now we've cut away that gastrocnemius. It's this large muscle right here. Origin, posterior surface of the proximal tibia and fibula, so it's got a nice broad origin up here. comes down like this and inserts onto the posterior calcaneus via the Achilles tendon, so here's that tendon right here comes down and inserts onto the calcaneus right here. It you know, contracts, it contracts, helps pull the, the foot this way, the sole of the foot to plantar flex, give you that step off motion. And it does not it does not cross the knee joint, so it doesn't do anything with knee flexion, extension, nothing. It doesn't involve the knee. It's a posterior compartment uh, muscle, so it's tibial nerve innervation. Plantaris, this is a small muscle. It's the last of the superficial layer. And it's this little guy right here. It's similar to the palmaris longus in the forearm. It's this short little muscle belly, and it has this long tendon that comes down like this, as you can see. It comes all the way down like this. So it, it originates from the lateral supracondylar ridge of the femur. So it comes up on the femur like this. This would be your lateral aspect. This would be your medial aspect. So it comes from this you know, lateral aspect of the femur. Insertion, it comes down and inserts onto the posterior calcaneus via the Achilles tendon. So it, insert, it, it becomes, and you can actually see that at this point right, right in right about here, it joins in with the, with the Achilles tendon to go down and insert on the calcaneus. So the Achilles tendon has three muscles with it. It has gastroc, soleus, and then plantaris. Okay, so that could be an anatomy test question. You want to be aware of that. Movement. Helps with ankle plantar flexion. You know, it's inserting on this tendon. It crosses the knee joint because it, it originates up here in the femur, so it also helps with some knee flexion. Innervation, tibial nerve, it's a posterior compartment muscle. So popliteus muscle, this is the first in, in the deep layer. So we mentioned this a lot in the knee lecture. So here it is. This is a posterior view. This is lateral. This is medial. Now, this would be your right leg. This diagram here is your left leg because this is also a posterior view. And then this is your lateral aspect here and your medial aspect here. So origin, lateral femoral epicondyle. So it originates up, from, up here on the femur like this, on the lateral epicondyle. 
and then it comes down here's the muscle belly right here and it wraps down here and then inserts onto the posterior surface of the tibia so right around in here and then here's the tendon of the popliteus and you can see it coming up here onto the femur and so it's you know the muscle belly is cut away the muscle belly would be coming down like this and like we said it attaches here to the posterior surface of the proximal tibia movement and internally rotate the tibia relative to the femur so muscles contract muscles contract it's going to rotate it uh, internally like this it also by doing that internal rotation it also helps it has a unique function it unlocks the knee during initiation of knee flexion so if you're standing there when you make that first movement to go to go walk and flex your knee the popliteus is the first muscle to act and unlocks the knee and enables the knee flexors to do their job. It's a posterior compartment muscle, so it's tibial nerve. Flexor hollis longus, so hollis meaning big toe. So this is a posterior view. This is a plantar surface view. This is the second muscle in our deep layer origin, posterior surface of the fibula. So this would be lateral out here, medial out here. So it comes from the Posterior surface of the fibula up here, as you can see, the muscle comes down like this, a uh, nice broad muscle belly, and then it comes down and wraps around the ankle right there. And then, as you can see, here's the tendon coming out on the plantar. After it's wrapped around the ankle, it comes down on the plantar surface, and it attaches to the plantar surface of the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe, and you can see that really nicely here. It flexes the big toe because obviously it crosses here, so it contracts, contracts, it's going to pull, it's going to flex the big toe, it's got to wrap under like this. It also crosses the ankle joint, so it's going to uh, help a little bit with ankle plantar flexion. Again, it's a posterior compartment muscle, so tibial nerve. Flexor digitorum longus, so again, posterior view, plantar view. So here it is right here, this nice long muscle right here. Again, it travels uh, with this flexor hollis as long as it comes in like this and wraps around the ankle like this and then here's FHL here flexor hollis as long as and then here's FDL flexor digitorum longus coming in this way and as you can see it fans out here and attaches to the plantar surface of the base of the distal phalanges of toes two through five and you can see that very nicely right here it originates from the posterior surface of the tibia so up here movement it flexes the toes of two, toes two through five, so again, muscles contract, they contract, pull this way, it's posterior compartment muscle, tibial nerve. Tibialis posterior, so you have a tibialis anterior in the anterior compartment, and then here you have a tibialis posterior in the posterior compartment. This, this guy right here comes down and it also travels, so you have three tendons that travel around here in the ankle. You have flexor hollis longus, flexor digitorum longus, and then tibialis posterior. We'll talk about that in the ankle lecture. There's a uh, unique spatial relationship, especially with also with the artery and nerve that you, is definitely very high yield for anatomy exams and potentially could be on a board exam as well. So stay tuned. We'll talk about that in the an ankle lecture. So this is originating from the posterior surface of the tibia and the fibula. So it has a nice broad origin up here. It comes down and inserts and it wraps around, as you can see, and it comes down and it attaches in this region right here where this is the cuneiform, this is the navicular bone, this is the plantar surface of the foot, so it comes in and attaches there. Movement, it does foot inversion, so this is your medial aspect, your lateral aspect, so it's going to contract, contract, pull the foot up this way, have the sole point this way medially, so that's inversion. It also crosses the ankle joint, so it helps with ankle plantar flexion. It's a posterior compartment muscle, tibial nerve. All right, so that wraps up our discussion of the osteology and the muscles in the leg region. Next, we'll talk about the blood vessels, the nerves, and the clinical pearls.